Hello, my name is Ryan Page and I'm an application specialist for Techless Structures. Today in this video, we're going to take a look on how you would model penetrations in concrete structures. Specifically, we'll look at round, hollow penetration sleeves, such as for pipe and conduit, as well as plate liners for blockouts in your concrete structures. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to place a single sleeved pipe penetration on this wall that sits along grid line five. When modeling embedments or hardware or anything like that, some, it's often very uh, convenient to make sure that you're using views that are parallel or uh, perpendicular to your plane. And so when we snap to this plan view, that's not really going to help us out. So I'm gonna close this view, go to the view ribbon and open up a couple of views that are gonna be more helpful. First and foremost, I want to look at my wall. So I'm going to open up elevation along grid line five. Now, if your model doesn't have views that are along a grid line, you can always select your grid, right click, hit create view, and then along grid lines, and bring up this dialog box to, to create your views. Make sure that you're selecting the grid when you do so. Otherwise, you can use the create new view options here and found on the review ribbon to, to create the views you need. Now that I have this elevated view, I am just going to shrink my work area so I'm not so far zoomed out when I don't need to be. I know that my penetrations are going to be above 9 foot 2 but below 18 foot so I'm just going to kind of hone in right in that area. Now I'm also going to open up one more view, a plan view, because I do want to model my, my penetration sleeve horizontally in my plan view. Now you have a couple of options you can consider. You can open up the plan view at nine foot two, and that means when you, in the plan view, when you model your pipe sleeve, it'll come in resting at the top of the slab, right? Or conversely, you could do it at 18 foot. You could even do it at zero, zero, but that's just more moving that you have to do. The best advice here is wherever your dimensions for your sleeves on your drawings are being called from, that's the plane that you want to go ahead and open up. So for our purposes, I'm going to open up the plan at 18 foot at the top of wall here. And here we are. I'm also going to go ahead and adjust my view depth. When working with a full size wall like this, we're going to want to make sure that we want to see the whole area below and above the grid uh, where the pipe penetrations may rest. So three feet below this wall is not enough. I'm going to want to go, say, at least 10 foot down. So I'm going to modify my view that way. My slab becomes visible, right? So I know I'm going to be seeing everything until that slab. And then just like the other view, I'm going to shrink my work area just to where the area where I need it. So I'm not so far zoomed out. And then I'll tile my views vertically. So now that we're all set up and ready to conduct our work, we can actually begin. So we're going to use a lot of commands from the steel ribbon today, right? First and foremost, we're going to use the beam tool to model our pipe sleeves. Regardless of the, if the sleeve is horizontal or vertical, we're still going to use the beam tool. It's a lot easier to manipulate and move around, and it's, you don't have to fight the predetermined elevations you need to populate for the top and the bottom of a column. So my recommendation is that you use the beam tool. So what I'll do is activate that tool, and I'm just going to put a beam in it to start. Right? Just put a beam in to start, and I'm going to use the intersection of this wall and column to do so, going from one side of the wall to the other. That's it. All right. If we come in, I'll rotate a little bit and turn our concrete transparent so we can see I've got a nice webbed member, which has no benefit to us right now, uh, and placed inside my concrete wall. Let's modify this to be the sleeve. First and foremost, I'm going to change its name to penetration. Next, I'm going to change its profile. Opening up the profile catalog, we have loads and loads of profiles to choose from. I recommend choosing a hollow circular section. We can expand this list and we have a couple of different options. Some standard pipe, pipe profiles. We also have a couple of EDI naving conventions. If you're unfamiliar, Schedule 40 and Schedule 80. And we'll use those today as an example. So I'll pick a six inch pipe, Schedule 40. I'll select that profile, hit apply, and then OK. Then I'm going to hit modify my properties pane. Now that gives me my pipe sleeve. Uh, but it's sitting in a manner that I'm not actually happy with. I want the pipe centered on my insertion points. So I'll use my contextual toolbar to go ahead and change the position to have it sit in the center. The, if you don't have the contextual toolbar visible, you can always hit Control K on your keyboard or go to File, Settings, and then turn on the contextual toolbar from there. Now that I have my sleeve uh, orientated correctly, there are a couple of more adjustments. First and foremost, when making cuts in concrete, we always want to protrude past the wall face, and typically with penetrations, we do have a protrusion of some sort from the face of concrete. I'm only going to do an itch for our example. However, please refer to your project's documentation 
for the appropriate distance off the face of the wall. Now that that's in place and it's kicked out uh, the right size, I'm going to come over to my elevated view. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and move this to my grid intersection of B-line and 18 foot, right? And then from here, right click, move special, linear. If you have any values in there, make sure they're cleared out. And from here, you can go ahead and provide the distances in which you need to move this penetration into its correct place, whatever your documentation may provide, or using an XYZ coordinate or something to that effect. Note your user coordinate system uh, left to right for us in this view on the grid elevation is going to be the Y. So we'll go ahead and say we'll move it five foot, uh, three inches and five eighths to the right. Negative would take us to the left. And then we're gonna go minus 48 inches down and then we're gonna hit move. And that moves our penetration into place. Now, before, say I had two more of these, before I would go ahead and copy this over using copy linear, I want to kind of finish the detail out for it. First and foremost, I'm going to want to go ahead and actually cut the concrete. It's easiest to do this with your parts fully rendered by hitting control four, and then we're going to come up to the edit ribbon. We're going to do a part cut. We're going to select the part to be cut, the concrete wall, and then the cutting part, which is the sleeve. What's really nice about using these hollow sections is it only cuts the outside diameter, so you get a perfect fit for the void of your concrete while still having the sleeve in place. If you don't need the sleeves, delete them. But if you do, they're already in place. So your cutting tool to create the void also becomes a piece that you're detailing. It's kind of a two for one. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if we copied this over, we need to make sure that not only do we select the pipe sleeve, but also the cut as it is its own entity at this point. If you just copy the sleeve, the cut won't travel. So make sure that you grab both and we'll do that here in a second. But before we do, let's address the possibility of needing anchorage on our pipe sleeve. Now, if you're using a collar plate, you would simply model the plate in a vertical fashion and move it into place just like we did the pipe sleeve. Then you would cut the plate with the pipe sleeve and you have your collar plate. If we're doing bolts, however, that is not so obvious. So we can go to our steel ribbon and use the bolt tool to insert some bolts uh, on the top fa outside face of our sleeve. By activating it, the first thing we'll want to do before we place anything is to change the preset. Let's go ahead and select studs from the drop down. We'll change our diameter from three quarters of an inch to half an inch. We're going to change the length from four inches to six. Okay, this workshop is good. I think this will be fabbed in the shop. And uh, we don't need to worry about any bolt distance spacing. We're only going to put one. So what we'll want to do, turning our concrete solid as well as our pipe sleeve using control four, we'll select the part we want to bolt to, which is our sleeve. Now, it's going to ask us for a secondary part. When using the bolt tool, sometimes you bolt two pieces together. In this case, we're not doing that. So to ignore this part, just middle click the mouse wheel and that will allow you to go ahead and actually place your bolt and turn your concrete transparent, hitting control two and go perpendicularly over the top there. Can I get an idea? Great. Now that we have the bolt placed, we just need to nudge it down into the center. This pipe sleeve is a total of 10 inches long. So that means we want an offset for this bolt to be five inches. And we can do the offset in the X, Y, and Z axis uh, locally here. So for the, from the start, just five inches, hit enter. And now we have a single stud welded uh, to the outside of our sleeve. If I control P and then zoom in, we can take this a bit further and place three more, one on each axis, um, or sorry, one on each side. Um, or we can copy them into place. If you want to do that, um, I suggest quickly turning off direct modification so you can see the start and end points. Right click, hit copy special, rotate, clear out anything from previous if you have anything populated, and then change the around from Z drop down to line. Then pick your start point of your pipe sleeve and your end point. Make sure that you're selecting the pipe sleeve when you do this, okay? and then interrupt the command. This is going to rotate this stud around that axis now. So once we do that, we can select our stud and we can change the number of copies from one. We want three of them and we want them at 90 degree intervals and hit copy. And there we are, right? What's really nice is when you bolt, when you apply bolts to something, it adds it as an assembly. So if you want to easily select both the sleeve and the bolts at once, you can just select your selection type to assemblies. But do remember, when you copy this, make sure you select your cut as well. 
I had done the control button to select those. And from here, we can right click, copy special linear, clear out any, any values, and then put in the appropriate value offset. Let's say in this instance, we'll go um, 14 inches apart, and we'll do three copies and hit copy. Now we have four penetrations. The only thing to make note of is you may run into uh, uh, conflicting bolt clashes as you do this. And you may want to rotate your entire assembly 45 degrees. It's the same process that we did to place the bolt. Uh, very quick and easy to do. And that way you can avoid the clearances. Just rinse and repeat for the rest of them. But that's how you put a penetration, a single sleeve penetration with studs uh, in your wall. In our second example, I'd like to demonstrate how we can make a blockout that's lined with steel plates and studs. This is often a common type of an opening for HVAC or other MAP applications in commercial and industrial projects. And so I do have an opening in my slab here, as we can see on screen. I'm just going to zoom in. We can see that I've got the cut there, and I can augment this if I turn on my direct modification and start to pull out, so I'm able to easily model that. This penetration was created from the tool on the edit ribbon called Polygon Cut, in which I applied the dimensions uh, shown on my source documentation. It should be relatively easy to replicate this uh, in your own applications. We're more concerned about creating the plate work that would line the, the outside. Now, one last thing that I'd like to mention, I have modeled this opening to the face of the plate so that means the plate will rest inside of our concrete as well as the studs attached to it. We can leave it like this or after we place our plates, we can stretch our opening to encompass the entire thickness of the plate. So let's get started. To model plates, first and foremost, I would like to go ahead and open up the correct view. I am in my 3D view currently and my plan grid is down at the bottom. I would like to work at the plan elevation of my current slab. So I'm gonna close this view. I'm gonna to go to the view ribbon open up my view list, and I'm going to choose elevation nine foot two. Right? When we open that up and maximize the view, you'll be able to see that the grid sits on the top of concrete here. This just makes my life easier when modeling uh, embedments and things like that. So I'm gonna to snap to plan. I'm also going to shrink my work area to only focus on the area I'm concerned with right now. I don't need the entire model visible, and this means when I hit control P, it's just gonna come into the area that I'm focused on. Lastly, I'll go ahead and change my rendering to shaded wireframe or control two on your keyboard shortcuts. Now that our view is prepared, we can go ahead and begin to model our plates. We'll go to the steel ribbon and we'll choose plate. Now in your properties, you can name this liner plate, embed plate. You can change the profile to be the exact thickness, whether it's three eighths, a quarter, one half an inch, or even three quarters of an inch or bigger whatever is required for your project. I'm gonna leave mine at 3 eighths of an inch. You also make sure to choose your material that's appropriate for the embed. But once you've done that and set those parameters, it's time to model the plate. I actually like to rotate my view so that I can see the face of my opening. Now I do like my concrete transparent so I can see the entire face and I'm just going to go ahead and choose and trace this outline. The middle mouse uh, click the middle mouse wheel there to terminate, just like we would a slab, and I'm going to select my uh, plate here. Now I'm selecting assembly, so I'm going to switch to selecting components, right? And there we are. The plate is sitting at the center of my points that I click, so I'm going to use my contextual toolbar to push that back so that the outer face, the right face, is uh, flush with the concrete. Um, now, if you're not going to model anchorage, you can skip this next step. Uh, we're going to put some bolts on the back and then rotate this into place on the other side. Work smart, not hard. Um, but to go ahead and create the bolts, we're going to click the bolt tool and we're going to come down again and load our stud preset and set our parameters. We're going to go half inch diameter. We'll do eight inch length. Um, and we are going to go ahead and change our rotation from front to back. I'll we'll come in here. And we're going to select the plate. If you misclick, interrupt, and try again. Usually click the edge. There we are. I'm going to middle mouse click the wheel at, to pick the secondary part. We're not bolting these bolts between two pieces. We're just attaching them to the back of our primary part, which is our plate. So middle mouse wheel click. And then we want to pick um, vertically where we want the, this, the bolts to place. So what I like to do is uh, shift, left click, and hit. Um, mid and then hover to the midpoint 
and come all the way down perpendicularly, and there we are. So now the stud is at the top center of the width of this plate. We can then go ahead and provide an offset. So if we need to verify what the distance of our edge here is, is uh, eight inches, right? We could do a series, a single line, but I'll show us how to do a, a double line. And so if we do one inch down on our offset of the bolt, that'll put us right in line. There we are. So now what we need to do is populate the array uh, that we have here. There's a couple of different options. You can do circles and lists of distances like you would rebar. But uh, in here, we're going to go ahead and, and, uh, and apply some value. So if we just populate six inches, we'll say, in the X distance, that is going to give us our two rows. Uh, and then I have an inch from here and an inch from here. So these are perfectly centered. Now, as far as the other array goes, we can select our plate and look at our overall distance. I have six feet and we can make some calculations on how many we want, or you can just play around. We can do um, nine spaces at six inches and it looks like we missed it by one. We do 10. No, oh, it looks like we might even be able to squeeze 11 in there. You can see how easy this is to adjust. Right? It looks like we have a little bit of extra at the end there. Typically, your source documentation is going to provide you exact bolt spacing and edge clear distance, so you can just populate those values. What I'm trying to illustrate here is how you can manipulate those very quickly. We could also do six and a half inches, and that gives us a little too much, uh, but you get the idea. So we'll, uh, we'll undo that and uh, leave it as is. Now, just kind of like we did uh, before with the pipe penetrations, we're going to copy this into its place on the other side here. Um, the easiest way to do that is come up to the edit ribbon and go to construction line and then diagonally from the concrete cut corner to corner just like this right create ourselves a nice little construction sign we're after this midpoint is really what we're after so if we select our plate and we go copy special rotate clear everything out pick our midpoint and you move along and you snap to the midpoint. If not, make sure you turn it down in the bottom selection toolbar. Click the midpoint. We just want one copy and we want 180 degrees to the other side and just hit copy. And there we are. Notice the bolts travel. As we mentioned before, when you attach bolts to steel pieces, it automatically adds it as a, as a secondary part to the, to the steel assembly. And now we have those two plate pieces in place. So the best way to accomplish the... Uh, other faces of the plate is to repeat the process, right? We won't go step through the whole thing. I will keep this this construction line here. We'll clear out uh, our information there. We'll come back and add the plate. The only thing that I would suggest is instead of starting here for our plate shape, right? And we can, we can come along, click the plate, start point, come in, complete our shape, rotate as, as necessary, middle mouse wheel, there we are, right? We'll need to adjust it so that it sits flush with the face of concrete again. Push that back. The last thing that I'll point out is that typically when you fab put this in in the field, you're going to want one of your plates to overlap. So with direct modification on, it's really easy to adjust that. We can just drag out the end point. Make sure that you do it twice. As you can see here, otherwise it creates a tapered face and we do not want that, right? So make sure you grab both the top and the bottom. One will become more visible as you move the first one. And then you have that in place. And then from here, you're just going to place the bolt array on the back, just like we've already covered, and then copy this into the position the same way we did for the right-hand side. Okay, just a couple of more points uh, based on some of the things that we've modeled, some things you may run into. First and foremost, if you look at our, our block out here in the floor, or if we come back to our our penetrations here in the wall, you can see that our bolts are missing and we just have some opening symbols. Actually, what this is, is our bolts being rendered fast and not exact. So if you see this and you want to see the bolts as they are, you need to make an adjustment to your view, right? You can easily access your view properties, either going to the view ribbon and opening up view properties from the ribbon itself or double clicking in the empty space of your view. Now, uh, we need to go to the display options and then we need to change bolts from fast to exact. You may also experience this if you're dealing with an actual mesh inside your concrete. You may want to check here. Same thing for reinforcement as sometimes. But then we're going to hit apply, modify, and then OK, and OK. And now you can see that the bolts are rendering as we would have expected. 
a couple of other things that you may want to consider. When you have uh, plates together like this, you may want to go ahead and start using the weld tool to provide welds if you really wanted to fabricate this. The other tip that I could always recommend is actually adding these as an assembly. So each plate currently is its own assembly and we can actually select all these. Now I'm selecting assembly, so the bolts are getting selected as well, as, and that's what we want. But if we hold down control and select all four of these, right click, assembly, join as sub-assemblies. Now, when we come over and we select this, it is one entire piece. Now, if we come back and select objects within components, or uh, components, just the individual pieces. The reason I bring this up is that when you wanna move this, right, if you need to make adjust adjustments in the future, and you select it, now you can go ahead and hit move, pick a point, and it'll drag the whole. Another important note when it comes to penetrations and embedments and things like that is to make sure that you're labeling it appropriately. Naming the sleeve as penetration is important, as when you quantify in reports or uh, uh, the organizer, this is going to show up as accurate. But more often than not, these have a PNID or a distinct unique identifier associated with each penetration for piping or conduit or MEP. Um, you may wanna take advantage of some of the user-defined attributes localized into the properties pane, perhaps giving uh, applying it to a building name and level and what type of IFC entity it is. IFC beam is, is perfectly applicable. The other thing that you may wanna do is use some of the user fields uh, to note the actual pipe ID. You can also go to a user-defined attributes and then the design tab to populate. Now that attribute design group mark uh, can be called upon in reports or in the organizer, uh, and then you can report upon that as well. So you could have penetration, the name, and then design group mark populate in your report. The easiest way to customize reports is obviously to get in the organizer if you're unfamiliar with the template editor. Otherwise, you can add this field into your report templates as well. If you're using a diamond license, you can always number using the numbering settings found on the drawings and reports ribbon. Make sure to go ahead and load up your numbering settings accordingly, whether it's initial numbering before creating drawings and or after. So the last thing I'll add is that these examples are pretty manual. We have used manual steps using the tools found only in the ribbons to create our embeds and pipe sleeves and things like that. There are embed creator components inside of the applications and component side pane, which are very helpful uh, in creating embeds quickly. I encourage users to utilize these components as they see fit. You can replicate some of the things that we have done here using the embed creator for your block out aligning if you so chose. Additionally, you can always create your own components for creating these uh, linings of blockouts or even penetrations of different sizes. And there's a lot of resources on how to learn how to create custom components of your own uh, on the TUA as well as on learn.trimble.com. In the US here, we have some advanced training on, the, on custom components specifically. So if those options interest you, I strongly suggest you check them out to further your skill set and apply these, uh, these types of details in your models far more quickly and efficiently. This concludes our video on modeling penetrations in concrete structures. Thank you for watching. Want to learn more about this topic or how to get started with techless structures? Just check out this video's description for links to our user assistance page, getting started guide, and our online campus.